With Halloween just around the corner, what better time to pay a visit to a cemetery? Cindy Carter recently braved the hallowed grounds of Nashville City Cemetery and found some frighteningly interesting stories. Just about a mile from downtown Nashville's booming Broadway Street, there's a quiet place where silent voices still have so much to say. The Nashville City Cemetery is more than the final resting place for more than 20,000 people. It's also a green space, a garden, a public metro Nashville park, and an outdoor museum. Nashville City Cemetery is, in effect, a history book of Nashville. The founders are here, some of the principal early settlers are here. This tells us the story of how Nashville came to be and how we came to be the city that we are today. Past Cemetery Association President Jim Hubler leads a tour through the headstones and monuments, providing context for the stories they represent. Follow me, Mr. Robertson. And some visitors strolling through the park just might be lucky enough to spot a ghost from the past, eager to share their story. Good afternoon. How are you folks? Good. Yeah. I, I am Governor Carroll. William Carroll was elected governor six times and held the office longer than any other Tennessee governor. His military career includes service under Andrew Jackson during the Creek War and again during the War of 1812. I had the great distinction of commanding the Tennesseans at the Battle of New Orleans. And after that amazing victory, I came back here to Nashville and embarked on a certain business endeavor. You see, I brought the first steamboat to Nashville and named it after my friend, Andrew Jackson. Full disclosure, this is not the ghost of Governor William Carroll, but the cemetery does often call upon volunteers to embody some of the notable individuals buried here. I've always just loved the past. Um, it's what makes us who we are today, and if we don't really remember where we come from, um, who are we going to be in the future? Volunteer Jennifer Watts portrays Ann Cockrell, the younger sister of one of Nashville's co-founders, James Robertson. In 1779, at age 23, Cockrell was already a widow with three young daughters when she braved a thousand-mile river journey with a large group of friends and family headed for what was then Fort Nashborough. I, though, most am proud of the fact that I will become known as the first teacher of the Cumberland Settlement. As we were traveling four months down the river all the way here to the town, we did get the opportunity to learn and grow with my students, all the children that were going to be joining us on this grand adventure. Cockrell was also the first woman to receive a land grant in Tennessee. But as notable as she is in Tennessee's history, Nashville City Cemetery Association President Jeff Sellers says every person buried here has a story worth telling. The cemetery is uniquely diverse and has been since it opened to the public in 1822. No matter who you are, um, in, in the 19th century, you could be rich, you could be poor, you could be black or white. Uh, you were buried in the, you could be buried in the public cemetery of Nashville. And so for that reason, we have a great cross section of our city. Um, from rich to poor and all in between are buried here at the city cemetery. 6,000 African Americans are buried here. Enslaved people, free people, some prominent in their day and some absolutely groundbreaking. This is the grave of one of the original Fisk Jubilee singers, Ella Shepard Moore. She was born an enslaved baby and her mother didn't want her child to grow up to be a slave, so she was going to drown her in the Cumberland River. Another one of the enslaved women saw this happening, or about to happen, and she intervened. She said, honey, don't do that. That child has a future. Ella's musical talent led to the formation and organization of the famed Fisk Jubilee Singers. Follow me. 
Guided tours are offered once a month, but because this is a public park, self-guided tours are possible daily. Now the headstones don't just mark the graves, many of them are unique works of art. And it's really cool to consider what the symbols might reveal about the person buried underneath, such as obelisks, which represent greatness, or ivy, which represents immortality. But few are as detailed as William Drivers, the man who gave the American flag its nickname, Old Glory. The grave's interesting. It's a tree that's cut short because that was a symbol for a life cut short. It also has a ship's anchor on it because he was a sailor. The symbols and crumbling stones were in danger of becoming a forgotten footnote until the city of Nashville intervened with restoration projects for the graves and monuments. And by preserving it, we're handing it on for generations to come. Today, the Nashville City Cemetery is a quiet refuge, a place to learn and remember. The many souls buried here still have something to say to all who care to listen. So thank you for visiting my tomb today.